So you say that you disagree, you have agreed to disagree on Kosovo. Can you be more specific on the exact nature of, of, the, of the disagreement as of today? No? He, you, you have so, devoted the audience to have a fight here. But I'm, <laughs> no, 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 no. I will, I will interpose myself. I'm very afraid you'll not succeed. Uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, now. I will be going one step forward and then she will uh, follow. Uh, no, it's uh, it, the, the, the history is known. Uh, and uh, uh, nowadays, Kosovo is. Uh, a republic uh, that is uh, recognized by many countries uh, and of course uh, United States and many of the European countries, France and others have recognized it and uh, in the same time uh, there are other countries that have not. But it's a reality. So it's there, it's uh, working like an uh, independent, sovereign state with its own, uh, with its own institutions. And, of course, and I am very happy to say, with a very admirable model of respect for minorities, first and foremost the Serbian minority, who is represented in parliament, who is represented in government. Uh, so my my conviction has always been, and this still is, that by recognizing Kosovo, uh, Serbia will make a major step forward and will practically overcome a burden of uh, the past that is an impediment to look to the future with kind of uh, uh, less, uh, less uh, of this burden. Of course, this is uh, our side, this is my side. But uh, at the same time, I have to recognize, before Anna takes the floor, that uh, there is an effort which is uh, considerable on the Serbian side by the president, first and foremost, to open a dialogue within the country about going forward in this process and to somehow consider that in this process, there is a need to not, uh, to not uh, keep going in the position that this is it, there is nothing to do, uh, we want all of it. So this is a bit what he's trying to do and I respect it very much, it's painful, it's not easy, tradition is not helping in that regard, but sooner the better, uh, the solution will, would, would, I think, relax fundamentally uh, everything and everyone. And uh, the last point I have to say is now, <laughs> the, our main, main, our major challenge and problem is not with each other, is with EU. <laughs> so we happened to be in uh, in a situation where. When the EU was uh, in a very good shape and was ready, we were the bad guys. Now we are the good guys, but the EU is not anymore in good shape. So I don't know where and when we will find each other in the situation to be both sides ready to, to embrace, because it's going like, we want to marry you, but we don't want to negotiate with you, we don't want to talk with you, because we have some, some problems. So we are candidates to marry, but we are not talking. So. I hope this, uh, this uh, will come soon. Well, uh, of course, not all European countries recognize uh, Kosovo, in particular Spain, if I am not mistaken, for reasons that everybody understands better uh, today. Uh, but uh, before I, I give the floor to Madam Prime Minister, frankly speaking, frankly speaking, do you think that so far the history of uh, independent Kosovo is a success story? In, what's, in what, what do you mean by that? Well, in, in all uh, aspects, you know, uh, security, uh, or trafficking of all kinds, uh, instability. Ah, I uh, no, I think, first of all, it's a new state. So, 
And let me tell you very frankly, it has become kind of a very easy trend to connect corruption and crime and trafficking and all this with the Balkans. And it's very easy also for everyone that wants to not have headaches about enlargement, not have headaches about getting more countries to the table, to just jump on that. I want to say to you one thing and I'll stop. I saw a report of the European Commission on corruption within you. The numbers are bigger than the GDP of all our countries. So <laughs> now I accept to be criticized on that because the nature of corruption in our countries is different in the sense that it's, it has a lot to do with uh, institutions that need to be stronger and with modernization with the state as a modern entity, which we which we don't have yet as France or as Germany or others have because, you know, it, it has been worked far long ago to have what you have now, which was not the case to us. But I would like, you know, to state that, yes, we have problems with crime, we have problems with corruption, we have problems with all, but nor the Balkans, either Albania or Kosovo are the fatherland of crime and of corruption. So if we'll then try to find the fatherland, I don't know if it is one, but it is not in the Balkans, it is not in Albania, it's not in Kosovo. Thank you very much. Madam uh, uh, Prime Minister, I, I have uh, visited myself Serbia and Kosovo, I have been there, including the Champ des Merles, I don't know how it's called uh, in, in English, Champ des Merles, the Champ des Merles. You, you said I speak French better than you. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it's supposed to be the cradle of Serbia. It is the battle which is considered to be uh, the, 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 the source, the origin of, the, uh, of, of Serbia. Is, is, is this separation still considered as a terrible uh, wound? Uh, the, the Kosovo issue is still uh, as sensitive as it was, uh, I would say, 10 years ago? I, my impression is that it's, it's, it's a bit, it has a bit softened, but maybe I am wrong. I think it's still very, very sensitive and it will, I, I, I think it will always be a very, very emotional issue for Serbia. I mean, uh, the, the uh, center of, uh, of our uh, church, of the Serbian Orthodox Church is, uh, has been in Kosovo, it's been in medieval times, you know, the, 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 the capital has been in Kosovo, and all of these uh, places still carry the same name. So whenever you look at the map, it, you know, that reminds you of, uh, of, of uh, the cradle, as you said, the cradle of Serbia. It's a very, very emotional issue. Uh, we are trying to be... Uh, um, Flexible, and we are, you know, we're we're trying not to uh, look at uh, look at it from the emotional point of view because uh, uh, we all know where the emotions uh, took us in the past. So we are trying to be very pragmatic. But as of uh, the status of Kosovo for us, I have to admit, is a, it's a very very straightforward issue. It's a very straightforward issue. It's a matter of the international law. And uh, the international law with that is very clear. Um, and we've always kept saying that if you, uh, uh, if you recognize the, the unilateral uh, dec de uh, declaration of independence of Kosovo, you will open Pandora's box. And uh, that, exa that is exactly what is happening today. And uh, you know, we, uh, Spain is our, our great friend. And we are uh, keeping uh, calm and quiet in order not to really uh, 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 get this uh, into th th this situation between uh, uh, in, in Spain uh, with Catalonia to, to blow out of the proportion, proportion. But that is what happens when you basically do not respect the international law and you blur the boundaries, you know. And Serbia has been very clear about that, you know. We had uh, then Crimea. Uh, we are recognizing the, uh, the, the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine, although we have a very close and very good relationship with Russia because it's in line with the international law. So 
you know, we are getting into a very difficult, very, very complex place when you're not recognizing the international law. And that is what we have been kept saying. And that's what's, uh, what's basically uh, becoming more and more apparent. And I think, unfortunately, that Europe, finally Europe has came out of a very difficult period with, uh, with after Brexit, with all of the, uh, all of the important uh, uh, elections in, uh, in Germany, in uh, France, in Austria, and uh, in Netherlands, you know, and came out with a stronger Europe. But then this thing in, in Spain happened. So, you know, we again say, you know, go back to the international law. And, you know, by respecting the international law, we will all be in a more stable, more secure place. So that's basically what we've been kept saying. But the, what's also important is that uh, we have what we have today. And, uh, and, and again, also the, the Serbs in Kosovo uh, have been very uh, uh, proved to, to, be, to be very responsible politicians and basically joined the, the car current government in Pristina because first and foremost we have to think about the quality of life, and the security and the safety of all people living there. Uh, so maintaining that, I don't think Serbia can ever recognize independence of Kosovo. Because again, we think that would even further open the Pandora's box. We are deeply committed to right now thinking about the quality of life of all the people in, in, in Kosovo. Well, I think that many uh, outside uh, analysts uh, agree uh, that from the international law viewpoint, there is a real uh, issue. I mean, that's, uh, but uh, we are not going to talk about, about that here. Uh, I suggest that we switch to uh, the European Union and the aspiration that uh, both uh, countries, uh, Serbia and Albania, have to join the European Union at some stage. Now the question is, uh, is it, will, will these problems, the Kosovo problem, will it be dissolved in the, in the, in the European Union if uh, the European Union enlarges uh, further uh, to include, uh, to integrate uh, both the countries? Or uh, will it be the reverse, that is the beginning of disintegr or more dis disintegration of the European Union? That's a very serious issue because after the collapse of the Soviet Union, we have, been, we have had to enlarge very, very quickly. And uh, that's uh, one uh, major uh, reason for the current difficulties of the European Union. We have been, in a way, forced to enlarge too fast. And uh, today, there is a degree of heterogeneity within the European Union and governance issues which uh, are quite difficult to overcome. So, uh, and, and in fact, uh, Prime Minister Rama alluded to that uh, a few minutes ago. So my question to both of you is uh, how, uh, well, do you, do you, uh, you, you say that you will never, uh, Serbia will never recognize Kosovo. Of course, this never uh, it depends on uh, historical further, further historical developments, including the European Union. So can we uh, now uh, ask both of you how you see your own uh, future with the European Union? What should we do, by the way, the European Union today? Uh, and uh, how could we uh, have a process that gradually over time would allow to uh, smoothly uh, remove the problem? So, First of all, I would say that uh, it's a different historical moment. And uh, comparing the fast enlargement of the beginning with uh, the need to uh, complete uh, the process is not very accurate, I would say. It's not about enlargement in this case, it's about completion. Because uh, of many reasons, but I would, uh, I would um, try to concentrate them in the first and foremost strategic need for Europe to complete uh, and to not let the Balkans stay like a gray zone where other actors can have their hands and can uh, promote uh, their agendas and can create disruption. Because, uh, secondly, uh, we live in a time 
whereas uh, the, the uh, very uh, distinguished uh, friend of this uh, World uh, Conference Forum uh, policy, uh, the patriarch remembers, uh, is also very much connected with uh, how different religions live together and how different communities with different faiths succeed to not disrupt. And let not forget that the Balkans are the most diverse area in Europe in terms of religious, religion. So uh, the Muslims in the Balkans are the most, uh, let's say, pro-European Muslims you can find in the Muslim world, and the, and the Bernian Muslims are the most pro-American. So our Muslims are more pro-American than Texans. But it's not something that may stay there forever, and it has, not, it has not to be taken for granted, because others are also trying to. So radicalism and uh, disruption uh, in different ways can come, and then will be as it has always been, not just a Balkan problem, but a European problem, it will be a, a problem for Europe. And thirdly, it's also very important to complete uh, the project exactly, exactly for the same reason that uh, anti-European or anti-enlargement or whatever anti uh, are trying to say. Exactly for more safe and secure Europe, for more safe and secure France or Germany or whatever, the Balkans need to be part of this project. Because otherwise, they, they risk to be platforms for different disruption. So this is strategic. On the other hand, I understand, and we understand, that uh, having uh, all the headaches and uh, having all the problems uh, Europe is facing uh, with uh, newcomers, it's not, very, uh, it's not very sexy to imagine to extend the table with Serbs and Albanians and Macedonians and others that will come and will go, will make the family go beyond uh, 30 members and then uh, imagine to have Albanians or Serbs vetoing something. I know, it's not, you know. But in the same time, it's exactly the reason why Europe has to reform and has to change. We fully, I fully understand, I fully agree. I, 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 I am fully sympathetic with what President Macron is trying to promote as a different way of making the union work. Because, let's face it, you know, it can't be like the grandfather or the grandmother, you know who they may, might be in the European Union context, and then the parents and then the children have the same vote. And then you have a kid there saying, no, I veto you, so no budget for the family. I understand it, we understand it, but at the same time, what I can't understand is the non-negotiation between Euro European Union and Albania yet, or Macedonia, or uh, the other, the other countries that are non-negotiating. Serbia is negotiating, and Montenegro is negotiating. With all the, but we are in a position that we are EU candidate country. So we are candidates to marry. We are told that we will marry, and we are being told that we will not talk. So how this will happen? Because negotiating is not enlarging, so it's not of any obligation. They, they can say, OK, we're negotiating. You are not ready, so you have to do this and that and that, and then I'll see you again. But not talking is completely, is completely ununderstandable. So this is a bit the picture I would. Madam, uh, firstly, I completely agree with uh, with Eddie. I think uh, I think that uh, uh, Southeast Europe, or as uh, as as we now usually refer to it, the West Western Balkans, uh, needs uh, EU. At the same time, I think that EU needs Western Balkans. I think probably equally. Uh, because of the uh, because of the uh, uh, also safety and, and, and security, uh, and uh, because it will make uh, Europe whole. Uh, so Serbia is has started the negotiations. We've now opened uh, ten chapters out of uh, 
35. Uh, we hope to have uh, three to five more opened uh, by the end of the year. But we fully support uh, that EU starts uh, negotiations with, uh, with Albania as soon as possible, because I think it's important for the region. It's a good signal. It's a good signal for all the citizens of the Western Balkans, which are, are trying to reform uh, the societies, uh, uh, first and foremost, in order to economically uh, uh, progress and, and, and do better, but also in terms of uh, social reforms, uh, uh, more efficient judiciary, rule of law, and so on and, and so forth. So, so I think it's very, very important uh, uh, that, that the negotiations also start, especially uh, with Albania. Uh, we will obviously try to proceed uh, in, the, uh, in this EU accession process as, as soon as possible, but to again go back to what's really important, and that's, that's not really the pace at which we're opening and closing these chapters. It's basically the pace at which we are actually implementing the reforms, and at which we are actually having uh, macroeconomic stability, fiscal stability and fiscal discipline, uh, we have uh, efficient and transparent public administration because that is uh, public administration that is citizen focused. Uh, we have the rule of law in terms of efficient judiciary. All of that is important first and foremost for us and our citizens and our businesses. And then consequently it also leads us to the EU. So I think we should, we should change because of ourselves. But again, to reiterate, I think the, the region needs Europe, but Europe also needs region. And I think that's basically how, how we, should, we should talk uh, about all of that. And I think you know, what will lead this is regional stability, which is why I think the Berlin process is extremely important. And what will lead the regional stability is going to be uh, economy and, and, and business and basically uh, this regional economic area that we are now working on. And again, to go back to, uh, to the relationship between uh, you know, uh, 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 Kosovo and Serbia and Europe and Albania is that with all of the political difficulties, actually the Serbian Chamber of Commerce uh, was the one who actually uh, helped the Kosovo Chamber of Commerce join the European in International Chamber of Commerce. And the Serbian Chamber of Commerce is also, the, the, our president is a very good friend of uh, Mr. Rama, is often in Albania. Uh, and, you know, this is, I think, the economic uh, uh, relationship and, uh, and cooperation is certainly something that will lead the way and we and i think there the, po the 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 politicians and the politics should follow